Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Blade Trinity movie thoughts. Okay, let me start with some of the positive, because there's not a lot of it. Finally, a Blade movie where the climax, the third act, is not him breaking out after having been captured. It was getting a little old. And there are a couple of interesting enough elements. You know, them trying to interrogate Hannibal, and then, you know, the mention of, I will turn you again, and I will let you writhe in the hunger, the thirst. And then I'm going to take this little girl in here that you have, you know, that you like, that you care about, and you're not going to be able to control yourself, you're going to feed on her, and you're going to hate yourself, you know. That was a pretty good. And then we have, you know, the whole thing of, you know, there's still this... The thing with Whistler's daughter, born out of wedlock, you know, with her admitting that she feels like if she lets her guard down, she will die. You know, that is an actual, you know, finally something that isn't just pseudo-psychology, but actual psychology, you know. I mean, the envy line was just horrible. You know, Parker Posey's line about stop saying that word. Yeah, no. But yeah, the, you know, she feels like if she lets go of the hatred, she will, you know, not be able to hold herself together at all. And I guess that's about it. So let's get back to that, you know, the dialogue. It's just, we get it. You like swearing. It doesn't make you seem very mature. It's, I have no problem with swearing, okay? I love, you know, the swearing in, for example, Goodfellas and Scarface, you know, because that actually works. That adds to it. That is the way these people talk. But here, it's just like, they're just cramming as many swears in there as they can. And by the way, wasn't this movie PG-13? You know, so it's just like, they're just throwing in as many swear words as they can without, you know, being labeled... <sighs> yeah, whatever. And just the... The jokes are just painful. One slightly good thing also is Dominic Purcell as Dracula. Other than that he looks like, you know, he walked right off the catwalk. He looks like a freaking supermodel when he's walking around with the open shirt and the freaking necklaces. Anyway, his presence, you know, not all big excuse me, guys that are in movies actually come off as all that intimidating, you know. Dominic Purcell does. He does have that presence. He does not have that much acting ability, to be perfectly honest, but he does really work. It's, you know, it's the same as if you watch Prison Break. He has that physical presence, you know. He has some menace to him, and that really works when he plays on that. You know, the final fight, for example. That really works, you know, you do feel some intensity there. On that character, though, why does he pretend to be Vance just to meet Blade, just to stab Hannibal, then he jumps out a window, runs away from Blade, and then we have, you know, and then he's on top of a building, and he's got a baby. Slight side note. As far as production goes, why would you use a real baby? I've seen the outtakes where the, the kid's constantly crying and poor Dominic is standing there, you know, trying to calm it down. Why wouldn't you just use a dummy? Anyway, what was the point of that scene? You know, just for him to say, you know, ah, I have a sword too, you know. No, wait, I know it's because he has to make the offer, you know. Now we're back to the formula of the Blade movies. We have to have the bad guy offer the you know, Blade, a deal, you know, offer him to be his ally. You know, on the second one, it actually kind of made sense, and the first one, it was the first time we saw it. This time, it's the same deal as in the first movie, it's just, repeat, it's, 
we just gone, we humans have gone from being cattle to being insects. That's all. That is the entire, that is the only change that there's been here between the two movies. Honestly, the first time I saw Abigail, the first time she gets attacked, I didn't think those were vampires at first. I thought they were just like trying to rob her and then suddenly they start turning into ash and it's like, oh, those are vampires, you know. They apparently, they cut the scene, it's in the extended cut, but they cut the bit where they're like going around saying, oh, I'm so hungry, can't we just feed on these people? But when they just start attacking her, I don't know. By the way, what did happen to, in the first movie, they're talking about, you know, we have to not grow too much in numbers, you know, that was a good explanation, that, you know, made sense as far as, you know, this is why the vampires aren't all over the place already, this is why you don't know that they're there. In this one, they're apparently just, there are a lot of careless vampires, and they're just all over the place, so why has no one noticed them? You know, one thing that might be interesting in a Blade movie would be if someone actually noticed all those tattoos, you know, the glyphs of the familiars, you know. I mean, if they have them on the frickin' wrist, as my girlfriend pointed out, you shake their hand, you see the glyph, you know, wh what's up with that? Why, why not a movie that starts with someone, you know, noticing that and, like, maybe going to someone, maybe they'd be sounds, but maybe they would meet someone who's pretending to be a familiar because they also, they've done the glyph themselves, maybe, or something, you know, and they, like, take that person, that, the one that figured stuff out, to Blade, or to another hunter, or something, you know. In this movie, they try, I, I don't even know if they're trying for it, but they do this, that thing of, you know, no, it's not real, you're not really fighting vampires, it's just, you know, what is the point of that entire scene where familiar Dr. Vance stands there, you know, and says, you know, oh, I think it's really parts of yourself that you're attacking, you know. Side note, man, that guy's obnoxious. He's, like, obnoxious in everything you see him in. I mean, Kath and Kim, try to watch just 30 seconds of that guy. It's just intolerable. Anyway. If they were going to... If they were trying to make us buy it, you shouldn't have shown a vampire filming the entire thing, and you shouldn't have shown all that vampire death prior to that. And then, you know, so, and if we're not meant to buy it, why spend so much time on it? And then it just, you know, comes out to this big battle of the cop cliches, you know. Oh, you promised us, Chief. You promised you would work with us on this. Not this time. Okay, just stop. Are, what is this? Why are you wasting our time with this? Seriously. And then, you know, by the way, James Romano really likes playing, you know, cops and other authority figures, you know, when he isn't playing something completely different. That's apparently what he really likes doing. You know, Dexter, X-Men First Class. He really likes that type of role. Was there any point to Parker Posey's character having a brother? His death was pretty, you know, just flies right by, you don't really notice it. And they don't really have any brother-sister conversation or anything, you know. Triple H is okay, but as far as wrestlers in movies go, you know, give me the guy in The Punisher, you know, the Russian. I don't remember the actor's name, but, you know. I guess that's about it, so. Hope you enjoyed it. Okay. If Blade is now public enemy number one after having killed a total of one human, why can he just walk right into Dr. Vance's office, you know, beating up security guards? No one calls the police. There's no mention of, you know, there, that amounts to absolutely nothing. You know, they capture him, and that's what, they couldn't have captured him themselves? The vampires couldn't have captured him without the help of humans? They did all right twice before, you know, at least twice before. Why the big... And then, you know, Whistler dies. And it actually takes this time. You know, it, it sticks. Don't... It, when you actually see Drake posing as Whistler, it's like, oh, Whistler came back again. You know, at first. 
And then we have, you know, Whistler's daughter, born out of wedlock. You know, yes, his family was killed, but then, you know, I came of age and I found him and told him to train me. I guess you were away that day and he never really bothered to tell you about me. You know, it just, I don't know, it just seems like that's the kind of thing you might want to say, you know, when talking about how your entire family was killed. But I did have one daughter later and she's a kick-ass vampire hunter, so, you know, I don't know, it just seems to me like something that might have been interesting to bring up just once at, at some point, you know. The scene of Dracula finding, you know, being disgusted with how he's being presented, excuse me now, you know, I don't have a problem with the basic excuse me, idea of that, but it was handled so much better in Wes Craven's A New Nightmare, you know, with Freddy Krueger. If this had been like a Dracula just stalking a victim, just, you know, maybe just see if he's still got it or something. By the way, what's with him walking way slower than all the other people? Is there some kind of something to that, I don't know, that he is there after they're gone? I don't know, whatever. He, if he's just stalking someone and they're like, who are you? And he's like, I'm Dracula. And they were like, who's that? You know, that would have been good. Like, they have forgotten me. I've been gone so long that they've completely forgotten to fear me, to have some kind of... But that he finds dildos, seriously. Dracula dildos and Dracula soda pop. And... Why? What is the... Again, it just seems immature, you know, and pointless, and ooh, he kills two people, you know, about as effectual, about as effectively as the other vampires kill. In fact, less effectively than the other vampires tend to kill. It just... I'm sorry, that if, if you want to make a strong impression about how this guy is, like, way better than all the others, yeah, you could have done better, and you know, nice job on, you know, getting out of thinking up an origin story, you know. Oh, we don't really know what his origin is. <laughs> yeah, right, you didn't really want to think anything up. You just wanted to, you know, make some up about how he's older than we even thought he was before or something, you know. Could have been Bram Stoker's idea of, you know, could have been, or I don't know if Bram Stoker's idea is the one in the movie by Francis Ford Coppola, haven't read the book, anyway, could have been that idea, could have been the idea that it was Judas, but no, it's just he's really old, and he was always a vampire, and that's all we're gonna give you. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.